Okay, so you've read the title, so I'm just going to get into it. I'm going to assume that the people watching this have a slight understanding of Japanese, and also I'm going to try to make this as short as possible, and maybe make a longer video later on. Also, I'm not an expert. I'm just someone who has been learning Japanese for quite a while now, and I also happen to have an interest in computational linguistics. So I'm pretty sure everyone here has heard the whole shtick about English being an SVO language, and Japanese being an SOV language. So the important part in the SOV, SVO thing, is the V. Where is the verb in the sentence? Every sentence, for it to be complete, needs a verb in it. And we call that the root or the head of the sentence. Everything else either modifies or describes the root or the head, or it modifies and describes those descriptors. In this video, I will call these things dependencies. English is considered a predominantly head initial language. That is, the root or the head, which is the main verb, shows up near the beginning of the sentence. Everything else afterwards is just excessive details. Let me show you what I mean. The sentence, I ate candy. I is the subject, ate is the verb, which is the root, and candy is the object. And then of course you can like tack things onto it, right? So I ate candy really fast. Japanese, on the other hand, is almost exclusively a head final language. That is the verb, the root, the head, the main thing is always at the end of the sentence, assuming the sentence is grammatically correct. So you might hear some advice saying, to understand longer Japanese sentences better, you should go to the very end of the sentence and read the verb, read the roots, and then you can kind of work backwards, go to the beginning, and it's kind of like English now, where you can now select every single dependency and then attach it to the verb because you already know it. I guess that works fine as a helper for reading, but that does not work at all when listening, right? Because when you're listening in real time and someone starts speaking a sentence, you can't go to the very end of the sentence. You don't even know how long the sentence is. So what you really want to do is figure out how to parse Japanese sentences as they're coming in in real time. So what do you do? You manage your expectations and you tolerate ambiguity. In English, we get the verb really early on, and then everything else in the sentence, you can just attach it to the main verb. But in Japanese, we don't have that luxury. We don't actually really know what a sentence is trying to say until we get to the very end of the sentence when we get the main verb. It's kind of like you're collecting clues. You're like collecting bits and pieces as the sentence goes on. And it's only at the very end when you're able to use these bits and clues to assemble a fully formed meaning. It's almost like in English, we have a short attention span when it comes to assigning dependencies. While well, in Japanese, you have to really just collect everything and wait. Now, this might seem a bit intimidating, but in Japanese, we actually have things to help us collect these clues. I will describe two of them in this video. The first helper is knowing that Japanese is always modified from the left. That is, when you're reading or listening to a sentence, what you're looking at right now is describing something that hasn't come up yet. You haven't encountered it yet. The second one is particles. Now, I know a lot of people don't really like particles, or they kind of hate them, they find them confusing, but this is where you're going to learn why they exist. Okay, so one more vocab word. We need to be able to divide sentences into their dependencies so that we can reorganize them. Now, these little blocks of dependencies we're going to call Bunsetsu. Bunsetsu is a content word, like a noun or a verb or something, plus zero or more grammar points. Grammar points being predominantly particles. And the bunsetsu and particles gives you answers to question words. Do you remember learning about question words in like primary school? It's like who, what, where, how, why, which, something, there's probably more. Well, they're coming back. Now the thing is, in English, when you learn about them, you already know what the question is that you're answering. But in Japanese, you learn the answer before you know the question. Like the sentence, I ate candy. You have the verb ate, and then you see after it the word candy. And the question word is, okay, what did you eat? Candy. But in Japanese, it'll be something like this. Watashi wa okashi o. And then what comes next? Watashi wa, you know that I am the subject. Okashi o, and then the candy is a direct object, but we don't really know what, what the question is that we're answering yet. I could say, tabeta, and then make sense. What did I eat? I ate candy. 
but I could switch out the verb to anything. The thing is, is that it doesn't actually matter what the verb is at the end of the sentence because you already know all of the dependencies of that verb. So I could give you any verb and you'll be able to create a fully formed meaning out of the sentence. Akashio tabeta. Akashio steta. Akashio hakidashita. It still makes sense and you can immediately know the meaning even though the meaning has changed without having to work backwards. When trying to understand longer sentences in Japanese, group it by bunsetsu. And each bunsetsu is a dependency and attach the dependency to the closest thing to the right that makes sense. Because remember, Japanese is always modified from the left. That is, you get the descriptor before the actual item. And as you get better at understanding Japanese sentences, you don't need to use the atomic bunsetsu dependencies anymore. You can use larger sentence fragments. Let me give you an example. I'm going to read a pretty long sentence in Japanese that I wrote myself from my review of Olive Garden, shameless plug, and I'm not going to give you the entire sentence beforehand. We will assemble the sentence bit by bit, and then we'll come out with the entire meaning at the very end. Apologies for my Japanese pronunciation because I still suck at this language. Okay, so, sentence starts, Maragiwa no ni. So we know that something is happening directed towards a bar table seat near the window. Annai sarete. So now we know that the subject is being guided towards this bar table seat near the window. And we see that the verb is in the te form. So we know that the sentence is not over yet. Table ni. So we know that something happened on or towards the table. Wizosa ni. So this is a na adjective that got turned into an adverb using ni. And now we know that the dependency has to link to a verb. Okareta menu ni. So we know that the musosa ni is attached to okareta. And the okareta is attached to menu. And there's a ni particle here. So we know that there's something happening to the menu that was haphazardly thrown onto the bar table. Times is square no kokoku no. Okay, so now we're switching to something about advertisements in Times Square. Mabushi hikari ga. Okay, so now we know that we're talking about the bright lights from the Times Square advertisements. And we know that with ga there, now it's the subject. Hansha data, that's the verb reflected. So, okay, answers the question words. We have a lot of these loose dependencies now. What was reflected? The light. Where did the light come from? Oh, it's from the Times Square advertisements. Okay, what did it reflect off of? It reflected off of the menu. How was the menu placed? Haphazardly. Where was it placed? Oh, on the table. What table? The bar table that was near the window that we were guided towards. So as you can see, as you construct the sentence in real time, and you group these dependencies into these larger sentence fragments, it's not too difficult, once you get used to it, to come up with the meaning instantaneously once you reach the very end of the sentence. This sentence has a lot of knee particles in it, but you don't get confused by that because you're taking things one at a time. It doesn't matter what the last verb is because you already have all of the descriptors, the dependencies, to describe whatever comes up. So the thing is, this will take some practice. I've been learning Japanese for like, what, four years now, and I still get chipped up over some long sentences. For more reading, there's this really good section about managing expectations in the book, Making Sense of Japanese. And also, I think the textbook quartet gets into this a little bit as well. I hope this video of me yelling at you guys was helpful. And now it's time for me to go back to having an existential crisis in a music studio in the middle of Tokyo at midnight. So I'll catch you guys later.